nigga man. with a toe tag and my bitch so bad she'll make a nigga mad. Chris yeah. on street, big rocks on my neck. You ain't seen my. What's up? BB Squad, it's your girl Brittany B, and I am back once again with another video. So, today I'm gonna be doing something a little different from now on. Like, I'm gonna be reacting and reading Creepy Pasta, My Spy Hole, and I'm gonna make a reaction video out of it. It's like a scary book app, something like that. Like, true and non true stories and all that stuff. So, let me zoom this circle out a little more. Oh, let me zoom it inwards. Yeah, like that's a little that's a little better. Now before I get into this video, let me put this back up. I'm just a little uncertain of where I should move it at. Yeah, like before I get into this video, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, give this video a huge thumbs up. And my social media will be in the description box down below. And let's get into the video. I live in South London, in a third floor flat, in a five story building. Two floors above, two floors below. Being that I live in London, I'm used to seeing people act drunk, crazy or violent, especially at night when the nut has come out. But what I experienced two nights ago shook me to this very moment. So I feel I have to write this down in case my situation becomes more weird than it already is. Why did he choose my door? Every evening, after I finished eating, I watch a couple of creepypasta videos online before I go out on the balcony to smoke a cigarette. I come in, lock the door, and put it on the latch. Every time I lock the door, I look through the spy hole. I don't know why, but I always feel the urge to. Every night that I've looked through the spy hole, I see the usual city lights through the rusty balcony railings and the poorly lit car park two stories below. I don't ever really expect to see anything interesting. Last night, as I was smoking a cigarette out on the balcony, I heard the voice of a man whispering loudly. So loud it defeated the point of him whispering in the first place. I couldn't tell if it was on the balcony above or the one below, but I heard what he said. This little piggy went to market. It confused me for a second. I thought whoever he was, he must have been talking to someone who was with him until I heard the voice whisper again from the stairway at the end of the balcony I stood. This little piggy stayed home. If these whispers are aimed at me, I sure as hell don't know why. Post haste, I put out my cigarette and turned to walk back into my flat. This little piggy had roast beef. I heard it being whispered behind me as I stepped into the doorway. The whisper sounded as if it were immediately behind me. It sent a chill through my bones. I slammed the door shut in a nervous rush. I knew I shouldn't have looked through the spy hole. I knew looking would be a bad idea. But I looked anyway. Why? Why? Why did I look? I lined my eye up close to the spy hole and tried to focus my vision. But all I could see was black. I could hear someone on the other side breathing heavily through their nostrils and what sounded like the grinding of teeth. I was frozen in place, knowing on the other side of that door stood some menacing creep. Staying there, staring out, I tried to breathe quietly, but my adrenaline was flowing as my heartbeat was escalating, and I gasped for a large breath. He heard. The darkness what? that covered the spy hole receded, and formed a pair of lips that were bloody and torn, and a mouthful of blood-stained teeth that looked like they were chewing on gum. They were not chewing gum. The man had bitten off his own lips oh, and was chewing wow. them while looking back through the spy hole with an absent-minded glare that only a maniac could give. He knew I was there on the other side of the door. With his disgusting and mangled mouth in a calm, almost happy voice, he mouthed. This little Ricky had none. Then gave a bloody lipless grin. That was enough for me. I stepped back slowly. I thought about going into the kitchen to phone for the police, but I became so paranoid, I didn't want the risk of him looking at me through my kitchen window with those deranged eyes. In my head, I told myself a dumb drunk playing some mind game. I crept into my room and crawled into bed, hoping to forget whatever that was I'd just seen. I awoke at 
3.27 a.m. to a cold chill. My feet were poking out of the bottom of the blanket. I started to pull my feet under the blanket when something at the end of my bed pinched one of my toes with a wet and icy grip. I scrambled and flailed my arms, climbing out of my bed, heading for the light switch. While I flung myself to the opposite side of the room, I heard the heavy breathing and footsteps of the stranger. His silhouette moved in such an eerie manner. It looked like he was gliding out of the doorway, looking like he was power walking into the hall, out of my flat, and back into the cold night. I turned on the lights. I thought to myself, that freak pinched my goddamn toe. It was that man. He'd gotten into my flat, but I don't know how. He left a collection of discarded cigarette butts at the end of my bed. How long has this damn maniac been watching me? Man, that was probably the most scariest stories I ever read in my life. Like, oh my god, that was so creepy. Like, um, that was pretty much it of the video. Pretty much, guys. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget what creepy pasta sh story y'all want me to read. Of what's y'all favorite. And, um, yeah, just like, comment, and subscribe. Just comment down below any ideas and all that stuff. And my socials will be in the description box below. And I'll see you guys really, really soon. Pe Peace out. If you disrespect, find out where you at. Pull up to your spot, leave your whole block with. Well, it's all about the event to the